Good morning, South County. Um, we're introducing a new song today. It's called Man of Your Word. Um, some of you might have heard it's by Maverick City. Um, but uh, if you guys would just sing through the chorus with me, here's how it goes. If you said it, we believe it. Oh, 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 if you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. If you said it, we believe it. Oh, 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 if you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. All things are possible. When we believe, all chains are breakable. When we receive the Yahweh, you keep your promises. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, if you said it, we believe it. Oh, 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 oh. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. If you said it, we believe it. Oh, 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 oh. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. Sing all things. All things are possible. When we believe. All chains are breakable When we receive Yahweh You keep your promises If you said it, we believe it If you said it, if you said it, we believe it Cause you're a man oh, 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 oh. If you said it, we believe it you're a man of your word. If you said it, we believe it. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. We have this confidence. You'll finish what you started. God, you have never failed. You won't start with me. Your presence in every step. Patient with every heartache. God, you have never failed. You won't start with me. If you said it, we believe it. Oh, 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 oh. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. If you said it, we believe it. Oh, 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 oh. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. How's everybody feeling this morning? Wasn't that a fun song? Good job, Sean. <laughs> Amen. This morning we're going to sing about breaking chains. How many people have some chains that need to be broken in this house this morning? Let's definitely just think about the words that we sing and the power of the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's sing about this power. There is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain break every chain sing it one more time there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of 
Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Oh, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, 
Break every chain, we're singing. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Thank you for breaking. Yes, Jesus, you're breaking chains this morning. Thank you, you've placed the responsibility in our hearts, God, to just be that army, Lord, that we just are the first ones, God, to just raise our hands when it comes to battling for you, God, and just going out there, Lord, to touch those souls, God. It's what you ask us to do, not only in our lives, God, but in other people's lives, Lord. Help us, God, to break those chains that hold us down like bondage, Lord, that only you can do, God, this morning. We thank you, God. Thank you for those chains that you're breaking. There's an army rising up. Come on, let's sing it together. There's an army rising. Are you part of that army today? Ready? There's an army rising up to break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yes, oh God, yes, oh God, yes, oh God. You know, I was thinking about it this morning. Um, there's a friend of mine, whenever his child, young child would trip, you know, as often we do in life, right? And you have this moment, right? You have this moment when that happens. Like as a parent, what are you going to do? Right? Is it going to turn into a big cry moment? Right? Any parents with me? Right? Is it going to turn into a big cry moment? Or is it, is it going to be like, come on. And so Ch Chad, would, Chad would do this thing. Some of you know Chad Spate, but he'd be like, shake it off, shake it off, you know, and so his kids would literally be shaking, you know, <laughs> shaking it off, you know, shake off the pain. And um, when I think about this song and I think about here we are today, worshiping our God, the God where who, right, nothing is impossible, nothing is impossible, the God who can do Anything, And so we're talking about breaking every chain, breaking off depression, breaking off addiction, breaking off laziness, breaking off all the things that would keep us from pursuing God and running after Him this morning. And it's just amazing to think about today that we serve a God who has exactly what you need today. We serve a God who loves you, who knows you, he knows exactly what your struggle is today. He knows exactly what's going on today in your life. He doesn't need to go find out about it. He's already read your mail. And he knows what you've come in with today. He knows the chains that you felt this week. I know there's quite a spectrum of the chains that we have there's the things that you might express here this morning, and there's things that you're like, I ain't talking about that. But the truth still remains. He can still break the chains. He can still break them. He can break that depression. You know? Those headaches that you're experiencing, he can, he can break that. He can heal that. He can touch you today. The healing that you need. And it's not hyperbole today. It's the truth that by his stripes we have been healed. We believe in divine healing today. We believe that there's something to the resurrection. There's something to remembering this covenant that we have made with God today. You should have received emblems today. 
this uh, cup of juice with the cracker and due to a national shortage on communion cups I say that tongue in cheek but some of you have this kind and some of you have another kind I know you're smart enough to figure out your communion cup this morning and how it works but we're going to receive communion this morning together remembering the sacrifice that the Lord made for us that his body was broken for us this does not become the body of Jesus. It represents the body. It's a symbol of what he did today. And so we're going to break this together. Can you do that? Can you break that? Break that cracker, right? We're going to break that today, and we're going to receive of it to get today. Scripture says, For I received of the Lord, which I also passed on to you that the Lord Jesus in the night he was betrayed he took bread and when he'd given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me he took that cup as well and we're going to receive the cup as well today this represents the new covenant this relationship that you have with Jesus you know, we, we just celebrated Easter and we just celebrated this amazing resurrection. We celebrated, one of the things that we celebrated was that veil being torn in two, meaning you get to go directly to God today. I mean, this is that relationship that we're talking about today. I hope already today that you have said yes to Jesus. In fact, before we even receive communion, I hope today that you'll say yes to following Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving my sins. I choose to walk in your truth today. I choose to follow you as my leader today. Very important, because this is not some ritual that we're doing. It's something that Jesus has asked us to do today. It represents our relationship. It represents healing. It represents hope. It represents peace. It represents what you need today as we turn to him. Can we receive of the bread together? Carefully take that cup. Let's drink together. Lord, we thank you for your body and your blood. We thank you for what you've done for us, God. It, it means everything to us. There's lots of distractions in this life. God, we don't want to be distracted. We want to keep you at the center of our lives, Lord. We want to keep you at the focus of our life, God. Recognizing that you are with us no matter where we are. God, you're literally living in us. Your spirit is right here in us when we've said yes to following after you. So God, we followed your word today, and I pray, God, that you would give us ears to hear, eyes to see today. Speak your truth to us, we pray, and may we be forever changed because we've been with you and we've been together. We thank you for this. We ask this in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen, amen. The worship team's going to continue leading us. Full on 
to my knees in awe. In the heartbeat of my life is to worship in your life. Your glory is so beautiful. Your glory is so beautiful. Oh, 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 oh. sing my life. In my life is yours. In my hope is you only. In my heart you hold. Cause you make this
you worship him with me this morning? Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that there is nothing, nothing that can wash away our sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And we praise you for that this morning. Praise your name, God. We lift you up. Thank you, Jesus. Well, good morning, good morning. Welcome to God's house this morning. Please be seated. And children, you are dismissed to go to Children's Church where our workers are waiting for you. Um, so feel free uh, to leave at this time. Well, for a moment, I want to draw your attention to the connection card. And I want to make sure you recognize how important this card is. It tells you everything that's going on. And if you don't see it on the connection card, there's this little doohickey down here, and I don't know what else to call it because I'm not smart enough to know what it is or how it works. But I know when I point my camera to it, suddenly there's a website that I can go to. I encourage you to do that and see how it works, and you will have an opportunity to see all the wonderful things that are happening here in our church, all the wonderful opportunities that you have to come together with us. And, you know, let me say one thing about coming together to be with us. You know, there's something special when we are together in this house on Sunday morning. We are privileged to be able to stream our service. We are privileged that many from all across the world literally are watching our service. But if you're local, you are missing an opportunity to be here and experience the love of God and the presence of God that we feel in a very special way when we're here. So I just want to encourage you all, make it out on Sunday morning, make an effort. God will bless you for it, and we will be excited to see you here in God's house. Can I have everybody in the house say amen? Amen. 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 We are looking forward to having you here with us. Well, a very important part of our service is our time of giving, and we recognize giving as an act of worship. God encourages us to do it. No, he tells us to do it. And we are privileged to be able to share together in giving. We are able to do so many things that we do here at South County because of the giving of God's people. So I want to encourage you to give. You know how to do it. I don't have to explain to you the many ways you have to give, but you have opportunity to give right now. And if you don't do it right now, you have an opportunity right after the service or any time during the week but I encourage you to do it. Let's ask God to bless our giving this morning. God, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to give for your work. God, we're not here just to be blessed, and Lord, we thank you for the blessing that we receive when we come together. But God, we are here to do your work. We are here to bless this Lorton community, and God, we recognize that our giving is a very important part of that. So I pray that you would bless your people as they give this morning, God. Bless us as we obey you and we honor you with our giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, um, I have a couple things to say, you know, kind of before I jump into this. And, and um, I uh, wanted to point out there was someone back here playing the drums. Did you appreciate the drums today? Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, Sean sends me this text message on Friday, and he's like, do you know Rodrigo? I was like, oh, man, yeah. So Rodrigo was in our youth group years ago, and uh, we just reconnected out in the, uh, you know, out, out in the front of the school this morning, because <laughs> it's been a hot minute uh, since, we, since we had seen each other. And so, Rodrigo, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us this morning and, and helping us out on the drums and modeling worship from the drums. You know, modeling worship. Thank you, dude. <clears throat> we had some uh, students who were participating in fine arts yesterday. That is an all-day event, guys. And uh, in, a, in a lot of ways, it, like, helps students see, like, bigger. Uh, there's so many different categories. I don't even know how many categories there are that you could participate in. But drawing, art, uh, short sermon, uh, dance, I mean... It, lots of different things that you can do and, and I think that'll continue to build thank you Jared and Christy for continuing to you know and they kind of open that up open the door there because that's something that Christy was doing forever uh, but helping our students see bigger and um, so I just want to say how proud I am for all the students for participating uh, in that and and really stepping forward you know there, there's these you know, you know, there's these kind of superior with invitation. You can get invited to Ohio and things like that. And some of our students didn't make it kind of a thing. But I'm so proud of all of them. Okay, I, I know we're in the generation. Let's like give everybody a trophy. 
That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying in the sense of, like, I'm so proud of you for stepping out. I'm so proud of you for trying something new. I'm so proud of you for speaking publicly. That's a big deal. That is a really big deal. Following after God, stepping into the future, and uh, developing your gifts. It's just so huge. So thank you for doing that. And um, we're just excited about what God's going to do in your lives in the future. Can you give them a hand this morning? <clears throat> Very big deal. Very big deal. And then I also wanted to point out that we have John and Tammy Kraft with us. And uh, some of you know that's a little bit of a blast from the past. We've actually got a photo in front of the chapel from 2012. And John and Tammy are in that photo. And um, I just wanted to acknowledge them this morning and, and say thank you. They, they let the youth invade their house right? For, for a long time, you know, uh, that was where youth group met uh, when Daniela was youth pastor, and um, anyhow, thank you so much for doing that and being our kids director, and I just want to honor you today. Would you just give them a hand this morning? <clears throat> yeah, we're on the precipice of uh, this chapel, and you know, you saw my email, so literally on Friday morning, I knew I had this meeting coming, you ever been there? Right? I'm like, oh my goodness, I have this meeting coming. And so I'm like, it'd probably be good to ask some people to pray. I mean, that, that's literally how this was. And I, and I started, who do you text first in situations like that? <laughs> he was definitely part of the process, yeah. But I'm like texting my parents, I'm texting my in-laws, you know, and I'm like... And, and then I had this moment, I was like, this is bigger, I need, to, I need to spread the net here. And so I started texting more people, more people that have been a part of the history of the church. And then I was like, well, let's email, let's email our celebration service list. Let's, let's email these guys and let them know, let's pray about this. And, and so it was a good meeting. I just want to tell you that it was a good meeting and another step into this final negotiation period, honestly, that we're having with the chapel. And I just, I just want to... You know, there, there are obstacles, there, there are hurdles, there are, okay? And yes, some of them are financial. Uh, but I, I believe with all my heart that this is our time and uh, that we're going to see this come to pass. Uh, and Cindy has mentioned, I can't tell you how many times, like if, you know, if it wasn't big, if it wasn't a huge step of faith, then we, we would be patting ourselves on the back like we did it. We need God. You know, we need him to help us push through this, and uh, it's going to be an exciting, exciting time. So we're, we're real close. You know, I feel like I've been saying we're real close for a while, uh, but we really are in the final negotiation process with that, and so uh, keep praying, uh, keep giving. I, I, I want to just kind of throw that in there. This is part of the maturity of the church, like continuing to give. Uh, the average follower of Jesus gives under 3% of their income. Now I'm talking like Big C Church, not South County. I'm talking Big C, like the average follower of Jesus. And um, <clears throat> does anyone know what a tithe is? It's 10%, right? You, you, you guys know this. We're talking to other churches. So um, anyhow, but right, let's do this together. I really believe the finances, the resources, all those things are in the house. They're in the house, and God's going to help us do that. Uh, so this morning... Come on, somebody give the Lord a clap offering or something because this is like a big deal for us. Excited about what God is going to do. We have started this series a few weeks ago called Unstoppable. God's kingdom is unstoppable. Do you believe that this morning? It's unstoppable. Our God is supreme. He's the only God. Do you believe that this morning? Yes. Yes. Yes, somebody was like, yes. I think it was Patty, yes. We believe this, unstoppable. God's kingdom is unstoppable. What God did on the cross, that's amazing. It's amazing, and there's always hope for us. We talked last week about why we should be devoted to the Lord, right? And we talked how we want to keep Jesus at the center, Jesus at the center. Who was singing Jesus at the center all week? Because we, we were singing it here. Did you wake up with that on your, on your heart? 
each morning. I have songs that I carry with me all week, just like you do, after we've had our time together. And so Jesus at the center of it all, not Jesus first priority, Jesus at the center. He's with you everywhere you go. So today we're talking about things that are still possible, okay? Still possible. There's things right now, you might have even given up on them, you might have written somebody off, but I want to tell you today that it's still possible. It's still possible. Jesus can still do a work because he's still working. He's working. Even when you're sleeping, he's still working. Things are still happening. God is still moving. He's moving by the power of his spirit. It's still possible. So I hope that something just rises up within you today. I hope that there's a faith that begins to build as you think about maybe someone or something that you might have like kind of thought, oh man, that's just, just, not, just not in the cards, so to speak, okay? I want you to think about it's still possible. What is the Lord going to bring to your mind today that's still possible as we look at the story of Saul in just a minute. So, where have you changed that you or others thought it would never happen? Have you thought about that? Like, something in your life that there's just no way. Maybe you thought there was no way. Maybe others thought there was no way. There's no way that that is happening. No way that you're going that way. No way that you're thinking that way. It's just not going to happen. It's never going to happen. Do you have those things in your mind? I mean, I can think about when Cindy and I first started dating, and she had her nieces with her. She would take her nieces everywhere, Desiree and Rochelle. They were three and four at the time, and so we would get ready to go out on a date, and she had this amazing car. I thought, now at 50, I'm not so much so sure, but it was a Nissan Maxima. It was a 19... 95 Nissan Maxima and I thought man I'm marrying up this is great this is great so so we get in we get in this this car and there's car seats in it now look I was in the military I've been on my own and I'm like oh no 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 I don't want anybody to think that I have anything to do with kids in fact at that time I don't know that I would that I would have thought that I would have ever had kids. Like, let's get rid of this. Let's make this disappear. We're taking your car because it's better than mine. We're going on on a date, and we're not doing anything that... I don't want anybody to think I have kids. So we put these car seats in the back of the, of the, back of the car. We'd hide them. And then we'd go out on another date, and they'd be back there again. Because she'd be taking her nieces somewhere, Right? So, but I thought, I'll never have kids. And of course, now I'm so grateful. I got Cassidy with me here this morning. Yeah, you know, and I'm standing over here and she's coming with my watch because I forgot my watch today and I was feeling a little off. You know how you forgot something like that? I was feeling a little off and so she's bringing it to me today and I'm giving her this big hug. And she says she's never leaving and for the moment I'm okay with that. <laughs> right? Like, I'm never having kids. Things that you've thought of. Do you have something in your mind? Something you thought, I'm never, never doing that. I said this, I will never get a minivan. Never. I hate them. I still don't like them. But I hate them. They're so practical, but they're so ugly. It's like, I'm never getting a minivan. And sure enough, 2004, we got ourselves a minivan. And we had that thing until Eric and Elizabeth had it in West Virginia, and it died. You know? Cindy still misses the minivan. Misses the minivan. I'll never get a minivan. We will never go from PC to Mac. And if you've gone Mac, you'll never go back. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'll never get an iPhone. I will never, you fill in the blank. You fill in the blank. I'll never make this amount of money. I'll never conquer this addiction. I'll never love again. I'll never trust again. I'll never get married. I'll never work for. I'll never visit. All of these things that we may have said at one time and something changed, right? Something changed and you had a new perspective 
You had a new perspective. See, change is possible. You know, they say that the only people that like change are babies, right? The only, only people that like change, but change is possible. In fact, with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Change is possible. Maybe even you today, you've said yes to following Jesus. Maybe there was someone that was like, oh, that ain't ever happening. Someone in your life that was like, no, no, there's just no way. They're just too resistant. They're too rebellious. They're too whatever. They'll never turn their lives to Jesus. Who are some people today that you think that, oh man, they're never going to turn to Jesus. A connection or a family member or whatever, they're never going to turn to Jesus. They will never change. And I'm telling you this morning, it's still possible. It's still possible as long as they're breath in their lungs. As long as they're still breathing, it's still possible possible there's no one beyond the reach of jesus no one no one no one beyond the reach of jesus he can still make a change he can still transform do you believe it this morning he can still do it well i don't know pastor Andy. there's some impossible situations i'm just telling you if they're still breathing it's still possible Keep praying, keep believing for a breakthrough. See, we have scripture that backs up what we're talking about today. We're going to read the story of Saul, and I'm not even going to have you stand up this time. I'm like, I got 20 verses. Just sit down. Just don't fall asleep on me. But here we have Saul. He was named after King Saul. Named after King Saul. That was his Hebrew name, prior to his encounter with Jesus. Now look, he encountered, or rather he hated Christians, followers of the way. He hated them. He was trying to protect his religious beliefs at all costs. And the way was a threat. Was a threat. He stood by as Stephen, the first martyr, was killed for his faith. Saul, who we know as Paul, which is his Greek name, stood in full agreement as Stephen was stoned to death. He was right there. In fact, that initiated a persecution of the church, and God still used it. God still used it. In fact, if you read the scripture, it says that that moment right there, like, and Saul was like right in there. He was approving of it all. He was like right there, like, yeah, let's do it. Let's cancel this thing. Let's eliminate this thing. Let's destroy the church. Let's destroy this way, this threat to our livelihood, this threat to our religious system. Let's destroy it. He was right there saying that. And everything changed. Everything changed. Acts 9, 1 through 20. And so there was a persecution that started after the stoning of Stephen that spread the church. The only ones that really stayed there in Jerusalem were the disciples. You'll read that in Scripture. So here we are in Acts chapter 9. We've got 20 verses. Hang with me. Hang with me. Here, Saul again. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest he requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, 
But when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I love that. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as, well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterward, he ate some food and regained his strength. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days and immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue saying he is indeed the son of God God we thank you today for your word that opens our mind and our hearts Lord to new things and God today by your spirit I pray Lord once again for eyes to see and ears to hear God who is it today that we need to believe for? Who is it today that you're working on right now? Who is it today that is praying to you right now? Lord, may you imprint that on us, on our hearts, and may we value their eternity today and have an opportunity to speak truth in life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. When can God turn a person's life around? When can God turn a person's life around? And each one of our stories are so different. You know, it's, it's not like, you know, we can look at, at Saul's story and, and we're like, well, man, that, that didn't happen to me. My, my experience must not have been genuine. My change must not have been genuine. No, 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 no. God knows exactly what you need. He knows what, what you need and, and certainly what you needed. He knows what you needed to come to him. And so, when can God turn a person's life around? When they feel great or when they're full of hate? I mean, right? I mean, God can do either of those things. Things can be going great. I mean, someone doesn't have to turn to Jesus just because their life is in shambles. Oftentimes, that's how it happens, but it can be when things are great as well, when things are great. So we look at Saul, and we think of this, and we, like, when they hate Jesus and all he stands for, I mean, that was, that was where Saul was. When they feel like they're doing right, like, they, they're like, it's all about the cause. We, seen, we see this right now, you know, in our culture, there's all these causes. I'm about the cause like we can get caught up in a lot of causes. I want to get caught up in Jesus and allow him to work through me. I don't want to get caught up in just a cause or whatever that thing is, right? When they feel like they're doing right, like I'm doing, I am doing, oh, Saul thought he was doing something good. Saul thought Jesus was a threat. He got authorization from the high priest and was willing to travel, listen to this, 160 miles to Damascus to try and eliminate or cancel the church. 160 miles. You know, sometimes I, I read, 
you know, scripture and things, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm not getting into the details like that, like, because when I think of 160 miles back then, sometimes when I think of 160 miles right now, I'm like, that's kind of far, you know, that's like all the way to the border of North Carolina. That's, that's a little bit of a trip, right? I mean, we are at marker 163. That's the Lorton exit on 95. So you think about that. You've got to go all the way to the border of North Carolina. That's how long. And like we get frustrated over that because we're going in a car that's going 65. And you think in this situation, we don't know how they traveled. And in fact, who has an image of Saul falling off a horse in their head? Right? If you notice in Scripture, there's, there's no horse or donkey or anything. But, but like we, I guess it's just like somebody was like, he had to have been on something, because that's a long way. But it's not, it's not in the account. It's not in the account. But, I mean, talk about, like, being anger and, and like, I've got to fix this. I've got to fix this. And so he feels like he's doing right. He's willing to go the distance. In a sense, it was probably kind of a righteous anger that he felt like he had. It's interesting, John 16, 2 says this, For you will be expelled from the synagogues, and the time is coming when those who kill you will think they're doing a holy service for God. A holy service for God. So, when can God turn a person's life around? When they feel great or when they're full of hate? When did Saul's encounter, or what did Saul's encounter with Jesus look like? So he saw a great light, and it was blinding. It was blinding. Uh, have you ever been on Lorton Road right at sunset? And you're traveling on that road that, uh, you know, it used to be when I got here in 1993 that that was two lanes, two lanes two-way, and you actually had to yield at the train trestle. You had to wait. Anybody else remember that with me? Like you had to yield at the train, train trestle waiting for the car to come through. There's still a few places like that around here. But we, we've gone from two lanes to six lanes, right? And we still have a traffic mess. <laughs> right, but as you're coming up that hill, as you're coming up that hill at sunset, and it's blinding. I mean, the sun is like, right? And I've got a little bit of height in me, so, you know, I can, I can kind of like use the car, like the frame of the car, and Cindy's over like, Right? It was a blinding, a blinding light. Acts 9 3. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. And he actually compares it to the sun in another account, right? I look at this idea of light, and uh, Isaiah 9 2, you know. 600, 700 years before Jesus, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. I love how Scripture just connects with other Scripture. And Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light, and we become the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop. That's one of our foundational verses as a church. John 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. This is Jesus talking. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. You don't have to walk in darkness anymore because we have Jesus. We have the Spirit of God in us that is continuing to shine light where you actually will know what to do in situations because you're turning to him. You're turning to the truth. So what did your encounter with Jesus look like? Like today, when you think about your encounter, like what did it look like? It probably wasn't as dramatic. Maybe it was. But God did something to, to grab your attention. Maybe you were walking through a tough time and he grabbed your attention and you finally were like, yes, yes, Jesus, I, I choose, I choose you. I choose you. There have been multiple encounters in my life where I have had to say, yes, Jesus, I choose you. There was my salvation encounter, and there's still multiple encounters where I'm saying yes 
to God. So what did Saul's encounter with Jesus look like? He also heard God's voice. He heard God's voice. Have you heard God's voice? Have you heard his voice? Today we hear God's voice primarily word through the scripture right if you're in god's word you're hearing god's voice today you're hearing god's voice in fact today as we're preaching right as we're talking about god's word you're hearing god's word and the holy spirit is taking that and he's crafting a message just for you today because the spirit of god if you've said yes to jesus is in you in you the holy spirit is giving you thoughts and speaking and oftentimes the the holy spirit will put a thought or something in your mind and you'll recognize that did not come from you in fact it might even sound like your voice because you're thinking it in your head but you know that it's a divine encounter it's something that god has done and that's what happened when we started the church when i pulled off the exit you're going to plant a church here that was just an immediate thought and i began to argue with that because I knew it was not that was not me I was like that's ridiculous we're not no way right the Holy Spirit speaks speaks but he takes God's word and he gives you exactly what you need and so Saul experienced the Lord himself and saw the Lord himself and heard his audible voice. Acts 9, 4 says, He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul must have been completely freaked out, guys. This must have been like no other experience. Like, okay, I'm not in control here. Who are you, Lord? I mean, this is Saul saying that. Who, who, who are you? Because right now I am not in control and I didn't have anything to drink. I was on this holy mission. He falls to the ground, and who are you, Lord? And I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. Acts 9, 6, now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Isaiah 30, verse 21 again, and just bring it in Isaiah again. Your own ears will hear him. Right behind you, a voice will say, this is the way you should go whether to the right or to the left. God's voice is still speaking today. He's speaking today. What else did Saul encounter with Jesus? He was temporarily impaired. Temporarily impaired. Saul was blinded and obviously rattled. He was absolutely rattled. I have to imagine this was just beyond frightening uh, for him. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. That had to be extremely frightening. This part, when I think about when he opened his eyes, when he opened his eyes, everyone need to close your eyes. You're like, Pastor Anna, that's dangerous. Close your eyes for a second. Now open them. Now can you imagine doing that and not being able to see? You were fine just a minute ago and everything changed. Saul was blinded and absolutely rattled. Can I tell you that sometimes God allows situations in our lives to awaken us to his purposes? He uses things at times to awaken us to his purposes. I mean, have you ever been temporarily impaired or stunned? And that's what we see with Saul. I mean, he had this radical experience. And the whole purpose of this temporary challenge that he had was to open his eyes to Jesus. I love this line. I've already pointed it out. Favorite lines here in verse 11. He is praying to me right now now he's praying to me right now how many people had written Saul completely off and here he was having a divine encounter because God had a purpose for it he was awakening him to his purposes and so sometimes it takes a radical experience where God meets us 
in a special way or we find ourselves impaired or paralyzed by our own choices and actions. Sometimes it's a crisis. Doesn't have to be a crisis. You know, Cindy's experience is totally different than Andy's experience. I told you the only reason for any corruption in Cindy's life is Andy. Right? And, and so, I mean, Cindy's experience with God is, is very like, she just opened her heart to the Lord and has never turned back. Isn't that awesome? I mean, you, you don't need sex, drugs, and rock and roll testimonies. I mean, God still uses all of it, right? But when life is great or you're full of hate, God can change things. He can turn things around. He can turn things around. I mean, what God used in my life was all my friends leaving in Korea. I had extended for them, you know, Andy, loyal, kind of, you know, loyal's kind of in me, and so I extend for my friends. No one extended for me. Years of counseling, guys. And so, and so, they all left, and so I'm, I'm sitting there like, ah, God used that. That was the time in my life where he turned things around. Here's my question for you this morning. Who is praying to Jesus right now? Who is praying to Jesus right now? Who is walking through a tough time right now and is open to God? Maybe it's you today. Maybe you're open to God. You're like, Pastor, that's why I'm here. You're open to God. Who's praying to Jesus right now? Who's walking through a tough time? See, Jesus wants all to come to repentance. All to turn to him. It reminds me of the situation here with, with Saul. It reminds me of the man blind, being born blind from birth, right? So from birth, this guy's blind. And so John 9, 25, you know, all this. I, I love that story. You know, I don't have time to go through it, but... You go back and look at John chapter 9 and the man's like hey I know this I was blind and now I see I was blind and now I see and I, I mean for, for Saul this, this was a major deal the, like scales falling off his eyes so who can God use in the process of people coming to him who can God use in the process of people coming to him how about this any follower of Jesus. How about you? How about you? If you've said yes to following him, who can God use in this process? You. And so Ananias, he's a, he was a leader in the Damascus church and most likely on Saul's hit list. Like somebody he was coming, coming after because Ananias is like, hey, uh, God, right? And so my question here is, are you available to God? Are you available for God to use you? As you're going about your day, are you available? Have you made the choice, God, I want to be available to you today? I want to be available. So a person who is willing to follow, this is another thing, a person who is willing to follow the nudge of the Holy Spirit. Ananias listened, and sometimes we think, oh, never question, you know, especially if... Uh, you know, those of us from military background, you know, you, you, you never, never supposed to question your superiors, you know. I said, dust the sandbags. Okay, yes, I'm going to dust the sandbags. I mean, whatever to do. And, and in this here, it's like Ananias, he listens, and then he questions. It's like, hey, wait a minute, God. I mean, I think it's pretty normal when we think about that. Think, there's going to be times in our lives where we're like, hey, God, oh, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. So he, he listened, he questioned, but then he obeyed. So I, Acts 9, 15, but the Lord said, go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel. And the Lord is still telling us to go today. It's not the great suggestion it's the great commandment the great commandment therefore go 
and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the age, right? We know that God is with us. Therefore, go. We're told to go. And Ananias, he listened. He had his whole, oh, wait a minute, God, moment. But then he obeyed. He obeyed. And look what changed, what radically changed. Saul's life was radically changed by the power of God. And he's still telling us to go today. Uh, this week on Wednesday, uh, we had Aaron Nicholson. He's with uh, Youth Alive. He came and spoke to the students. And, and he got there and everything. And, and he's like, you know, I had this message prepared. And uh, he goes, I, I feel like there's something else that I need to talk about as well. And, and so he ended up trying to preach his message in two minutes, which for most pastors, that doesn't work. And, uh, but anyhow, he, but for him, he, he like, from like five to ten minutes, he kind of preached the message he was going to preach. And then uh, he went into kind of a training on evangelism that was so practical and great. It was so great. I mean, I'm, I'm literally, right, okay, been in the church forever, and I'm there taking notes. I'm taking notes because uh, like, he's teaching me. He's, he's, <laughs> like, he's taking normal conversations that we have, and life conversations that we have and like showing the students through a process of, of what to do. Not weird, but just out of relationship. How to pray with people, how to invite people, how to share a testimony with people. It was very practical, so, so good. And we're so grateful uh, that he's our Youth Alive missionary and that South County supports him. We're so grateful for that. But it was so practical in helping our students know what to do. In fact, I used it. I, I had a guy come to the door on a pest control uh, guy show up. And uh, who, who likes salespeople at your door? Well, I just felt like after our first in, encounter, I felt after our first encounter that, uh, that I was like, oh man, God, there's, it, I, it, he was funny. He was just a great guy. He was a great guy. And so, and so I, just, I just thought, man, I, I'd love to talk to him more. Well, about 9 o'clock, there's a knock on the door. 9 o'clock at night, y'all, okay? There's a knock on the door, and, uh, and, and so Cindy's like, is that David? I'm like, no, David just comes in, <laughs> right? So Cassidy's boyfriend, I'm like, no, no, David just comes in. But, but, uh, but anyhow, so I'm like, I go to the door, and it's Tyler. It's Tyler again. And, uh, and he's like, oh, man, I, did, I didn't realize I didn't mark you off. I didn't mark off your house. And so we just start talking, and we probably talked for about 25 minutes. And uh, he's like, so, because I told him I was a pastor and things, and so he's like, he's like, oh, so what, what, kind of, what kind of wisdom do you have? What kind of words do you have for me? I'm like, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you too will be saved, you know? And, and so we had this really great conversation and I come back in the, in the house and, and Cindy's just hearing this and, and we pray that there would be encounters like that throughout the lives of our kids, that our kids would meet others that know Jesus and they'll breathe life into that relationship. And here I had the opportunity with Tyler and I hope you'll pray for Tyler this week as he's out uh, doing his pest control thing. Maybe he'll come to your house because uh, he's with Moxie. Moxie, you got it? It's Moxie. So here, here's the deal. We're going to close here in just a second, but who are you praying for who needs a relationship with Jesus? Who are you praying for that needs a relationship with Jesus? Uh, Tyler, I'm going to have Tom come up in just a second because I want him to share uh, his testimony. Tom Fudge. Um, but with Tyler, like at the end of that, you know, I, I prayed with him and he, he takes off his hat very respectfully, you know, and, and just has his hat here and, and uh, I'm praying for him. And at the end, he's like, come on, bro hug. Oh, anyhow, it was a, it was a sweet thing. I, I, I hope to see him again. Um, but I, I wanted Tom to share with you his testimony and how he values the eternity of others throughout his day. If there's anyone that I know that, that values the eternity of others and is looking uh, for people uh, to just be that light for them, it's, it's Tom Futch. Uh, would you give Tom a hand? 
that helpful? Well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> First of all, are you out there? <laughs> First of all, I want to apologize for being out here with my shirt tucked into my pants. <clears throat> And it, well, and Brother Doug, that you, you had yours tucked in too, so <laughs> we were a little it's out It's probably of coming place. back, and I just don't know yet. <clears throat> uh, when we get into our church, are we going to have a real podium? I don't know what that means, but sure. <laughs> it's not in the budget, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> well, Psalm 107, verse 2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord, what are the next two verse, uh, two words? You, there you go. Uh, thank you. Let the redeemed of the Lord, what's the next two verse, uh, two words? Say so. Yes, say so. <clears throat> and uh, thank you, Pastor Andy, for an opportunity for me to come up and say so, that I've been wonderfully redeemed by the love and the power and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul heard the resurrected Christ speak to him, and he fell to the ground. There was a light from heaven. Got his attention. God had to hit me upside the head with the proverbial two-by-four to get my attention. But he has his unique ways, doesn't he, to get our attention to bring us to his son. So just a, a couple of uh, quick minutes I want to share my testimony. And you know, a quick minute is faster than a regular minute. So it, it's, it's going to be fast, but Pastor Andy asked me to uh, give a, a quick testimony of how I came to Christ. You know, I love Pastor Andy. I would go to the gates of hell with Pastor Andy. If he goes any further, he's on his own, but I would, I would go at least there. I mean, loyalty has its limits. <laughs> But I came to Christ in the early 1970s in the Jesus Revolution. Maybe some of you have seen the movie uh, about Greg Glory and, um, and Chuck Smith. And I was swept in with just tens and thousands, probably millions of young people and people from all over this country. And it was a great revival in the 1970s, if, if uh, some of you are here and remember that. And, and would to God that we have another re re revival in this nation. Oh, we so need it. But I was a drummer in a, in a very good rock band at the time. I was going to college at James Madison. It was a very small college at the time. It's a real big university now. And I was very popular. I was liked. Uh, I was making good money. I wish I had saved some of it, playing on the, on the weekends in the band. And um, I had the eye of a lot of girls. I had a little more hair back then. And, uh, but thank God, I didn't end up with any of them until Darlene came by. Lo love you, honey. <laughs> but but like, like Paul, I looked fine to the world on the outside, but I was, I was really a mess on the inside. I, I, I really was. I was... I was lonely, I was empty, I, I, I didn't have any direction, I didn't have any purpose, I didn't have any hope that it would even be better. I, I had just broken up with my girlfriend and I was in a funk, I was overwhelmed with college life. I mean, I, I had more hang-ups than a closet, basically. I was, I was a mess. And somehow I heard that a group of Christians were meeting on, on campus on Sunday nights at, at Madison. And so, so I went. And I remember walking in thinking, these kids have something I need. And they were excited about Jesus. Uh, you could see the light in their eyes. And, and for the first time, by God's truth and his love, I had hope that, that there could be a difference in, in my life. I, I, had, I had hope, just, just hope. And, and, I, and I hung on to that. And I met Christ. I gave my life to him back then. And what happened to me, basically, David describes in Psalm 40. And this is your homework assignment. Read, read Psalm 40. David says that God brought him up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he, and he put his feet on the rock and put a new song in his mouth. 
And what David is describing happened, happened to me. God brought me out of that pit, and he put my feet on the rock of Christ and put his praise in my mouth for a new life and a new beginning. So I went from the pit to the puts. And maybe right now you're in the pits, but there is the puts. God will put your feet on the rock of Christ. So I was a rock and roll drummer, and now I'm a rock and roll Christian. My, my feet are on the rock of Christ, and my name is in the roll of heaven, and it, we all should be rock and roll believers. So <clears throat> if, if Pastor Gerald was here right now, he'd be waving his, his white handkerchief, I, I'm sure. Maybe I should have brought one. Those of you that don't know Pastor Gerald, he's a hoot. And he'll, he'll say something, and then he'll wave his, and this is a Pentecostal church, you know. Should, am I allowed to say that? Right. But that was over 50 years ago. And since then, God has so privileged and honored me to share the gospel and my testimony to thousands of people. And no doubt I'm going to see some of them over the other side of glory. And my dad, my dad will be one of them. He met, he met Christ a couple of days before he died. And God marvelously saved him. Hang on for your family. God is not going to give up on them. And God can save them. God can touch them. So the reason I say that is to encourage and challenge you is I look for opportunities to share with people you know they are out there sometimes we can get so busy with our own life that we forget what is in front of us and who is out there and people that are hurting and God has delivered us but a lot of people are in the place where we used to be and the story of Philip being led to the Ethiopian man in Acts chapter 8. Now I'm going to add on to the homework assignment. Psalm 40 and Acts 8. Read that. God led him to that man. And I believe God leads you to people. And he puts people in front of you and in your sphere of influence. And it's not you doing the work. It's the Holy Spirit. And But we need to be willing. We need to be available I love to give the Gospel of John out to people. And I'll see somebody sitting on the, <clears throat> um, the, at a gas station or at a picnic bench. Yesterday, coming back from the dump, there was a lady and her baby. I got out of my truck. Here, this, this is for you. I love to give this to people. God loves you. My life was so changed by his word. And I'm gone. But you don't know what God can do with his truth in just a few words really and when you leave God hasn't and he's working on a heart so don't get discouraged God's truth and your testimony is powerful and it's unstoppable it's powerful and I've seen it time and time again and, and you probably have too I'm going to close with this I grew up in Franconia locally and there was a pond behind our house and when I was a little boy, I would love to go to the pond, fish, but I'd love to throw rocks into the pond. If you have a pond and a little boy and rocks, you're going to get the rocks in the pond. And I would watch when the rock hit the water, the ripples would go out. And that's really what we can be for Christ. We can be pebbles in the pond of life and be an influence and be an example and be an instigator be a truth bearer for God to do wonderful, wonderful things. Thank you, Pastor Andy. I am so, I'm so grateful for the people that God has put in my life that challenged me. When we started South County Church 15 years ago, I didn't have a stitch of gray hair. Yeah. But I am so thankful for those that might have had a stitch of gray hair that have continued to breathe life and set the example. And Tom and Darlene are uh, amazing friends and people that have invested heavily into South County through their service, their time. 
Isn't that great? Can you give these guys a hand? I love you. <clears throat> Setting the example, keeping people's eternity in focus. And I know sometimes that's hard because you're like, look, I'm so consumed with my own life. I'm consumed with all that's going on. You know, I'm busy. I got to get from here to there. And pausing, right? If you read, we're going to do a series down the line, Divine Interruptions. But we're going to read through these interruptions that Jesus had. Because he's like on the way. And there's an interruption. And there's so many times where there's interruptions to our life. And may we be open to what God wants to do in and through that interruption. So who is it today that's come to your mind? Who is it today that's been on your heart? Who have you been praying for? Who does it seem like it's absolutely impossible that they would ever turn to Jesus? Because I'm telling you today, it's still possible. It's still possible. God is working. And in fact, they might be praying right now. They might be walking through something right now and they're praying and they might even be saying, God, if you're really there, have you ever prayed that prayer? God, if you're really there, I need such and such. I mean, God knows what we need. Would you stand with me this morning? We're going to have the worship band close us today and we're going to pray and I, I, I hope that faith arises in your hearts this morning because we're going to sing Waymaker. That there is a way. There is a way. Certainly if, if God has saved you, there's a way. There's a way. And we're going to keep believing. We're going to keep pressing in this morning. So who here today has a loved one on their heart or a neighbor or a friend today that you're praying for? All across this place, right? Someone that you're believing for. And, and in the natural, it might seem impossible. So I want you to make this song a prayer. Let's sing our prayer together. Oh, 
worship you. I worship you. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who you are, and that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are. God, we thank you today that it's still possible. We are part of a kingdom that is unstoppable. God, you are working. You're moving in hearts and lives. And Lord, just as you changed our hearts, you're moving in those around us. And God, we just continue to believe. We continue to pray for those, our loved ones, God, who are far away from you, distracted by the world, whatever it is, God, distracted by the culture. God, we call them out in Jesus' name. Lord, we think of them by name right now in Jesus' name, asking God for you to break Whatever it is that's in the way, every obstacle that's in the way, God, may it fall, every wall may it fall, that God, these people, these loved ones of ours would turn to you, these neighbors would turn to you. God, we pray also for even this new neighborhood that uh, South County will enter, this Liberty neighborhood, the, the name of the neighborhood. God, only you could do that. It's all about freedom, freedom in you, Jesus. So we pray that people would turn to you and they would experience freedom from sin, this true life, God, this true freedom that you've given us. We're so grateful for it, Lord. We're thankful for what you're doing. We're believing for great things this morning. It's still possible. God, it's still possible. We thank you for what you're doing in the lives and hearts of those that are even right now praying to you. We ask this in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus and all of God's people said today, amen. Can you give the Lord a clap offering today? Can you believe together? Can you believe that he is working? Can you believe that he's working through you? Can you believe today that his light, his freedom is being expressed through your life? Can you believe that today? Come on, South County. Can you believe that today? His light is in you. He's working through you. Let's go spread that freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.